The UFC is headed to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and my biggest concern is I hope that we don't have a Florida man situation happen at the event. In terms of this video series, I think this is probably the easiest one we've ever done, so let's jump into it. My name's Flying Brian J, and these are my top three fights that I think you need to watch beyond the main event and co-main event for UFC on ESPN Plus 8. Number three, Glover the Rainbow Teixeira versus Ian Kutilaba. This fight is here because we've got a veteran taking on a young buck, and both guys are pretty darn well-rounded. When Glover came into the UFC, we knew him just as a knockout artist. But in his time in the octagon, he has showed us that he's got a really well-rounded skill set and nasty, dangerous jiu-jitsu on the level of somebody like Damian Maya or Jacare Souza. He's really good at taking these youngsters to the canvas and getting finishes with ground and pound or submissions like he did against Carl Roberson his last time out. He's a former title challenger. He's got a little bit of a name on him, and I can always look forward to a fight when he's going to be in it. On the opposite side, we've got the young buck and Ian Kutilaba, who I also think of as mostly a striker, even though he does have a combat sambo championship under his belt. And during a fight of the night of appearance against Jared the Killer Gorilla Cannonier, he showed a takedown game and a little bit of ground and pound. So we've got the passing of the guard potential in this fight, but we have a total of 28 knockout victories between the two of them. 17 out of 28 for Glover Teixeira and 11 out of 14 for Ian Kutilaba. No matter where the fight takes place on the feet, on the canvas, I think they're going to be bringing a high level of mixed martial arts to the table. We might see a finish, but whatever happens, I'm really looking forward to the dynamic matchup. Number two, a fight between a couple of guys who I can't trust. And what I mean by that is I've picked Alex Oliveira to win fights that he's lost. I've picked him to lose fights that he's won. And the same goes for Platinum Mike Perry. And at times, both guys show a little bit of lacking fight IQ, like Perry deciding to go for a takedown on submission wizard Donald the Cowboy Cerrone. Twice in a row now, Perry's going to fight a cowboy. We'll see how it works out for him. Anyway, Alex Oliveira came into the UFC. We thought of him as a Muay Thai kickboxer, but he showed that his strength in the clinch and with body lock takedowns is really where he succeeds. And he's used that sort of grappling and strength to get submission victories over names like Carlos Frickin' Condit and Tim the Dirty Bird Means. He also had a little bit of success against Gunnar Nelson before Gunnar Nelson smashed his face in. Brazilian Cowboy is a really, really exciting fighter. On the feet, sure, he's great at length because he's got a long, awkward kickboxer, but where he really does the damage and the violence, which we all like to see, is in the clinch and up tight. On the opposite side, Platinum Mike Perry, maybe he's a polarizing figure, but all of his fights are really freaking exciting. He doesn't have the greatest striking defense in the world, which always plays into having exciting fights. His back and forth battle with Paul Felder was really fun. His performance of the Knights against Alex Reyes and that gorgeous elbow knockout of Jake Ellenberger was something that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Oliveira and Perry get in that cage, and I don't know where it's going to take place. Will Oliveira get Perry to the ground? Will Perry once again show lacking fight IQ? I don't know. Elbows are going to clash with skulls. Both guys are probably going to have a tough time holding on to their consciousness. And for however long this fight lasts, it's really going to be back and forth. My favorite term in mixed martial arts or watching sporting events is having ebb and flow. Oliveira and Perry are going to bring that, I believe, in spades. And number one, John Hands of Stone Lineker versus Corey Sandhagen. I feel like I might be jinxing it because this fight was supposed to happen back on January 19th where in the main event Cejudo knocked out TJ Dillashaw, but a lot of things made it so we didn't get to see that bout then. Here we are now, the 27th of April, and they're finally going to be locked into a cage together. John Lineker is one of these fighters that brings a skill set to the octagon that is you see it, you see it, and you still can't stop it. It's not very dynamic either. I equate his striking style to, like, a Reese's peanut butter cup. It's pretty simple. I mean, there's basically two main components, peanut butter and chocolate. And John Lineker has his left and right hands, and they're probably going to be coming forward in the form of a hook. His double hook combination, lead hook to a wide right, 
is so recognizable that when I see somebody else do a lead hook to wide right combination, I say, oh, they just pulled off a John Lineker. But it's not just those two strikes. It's coming forward with reckless abandonment, very little striking defense, and winging those hooks over and over again from his hip. The commentators will probably say that he's throwing a fastball from his hip. It's really fun to watch because oftentimes, like against Michael McDonald and Brian Kelleher, he ends the fight with one of those two strikes that he throws. They just come with so much force that his opponent cannot deal with it. On the other side, we've got Corey Sandhagen, who is the more dynamic fighter coming into the octagon. Even though Lineker does have some submission victories on his resume, I feel like Sandhagen is the more diverse if the fight were to hit the canvas. Sandhagen is huge, really long for this division. At 5'11", making 135 pounds is absolutely insane to me, but he uses that length to find interesting angles on submissions and also to weasel his way out of really deep arm bars like he did in Nebraska against Yuri Alcantara. But his length is really, really devastating against these shorter fighters up tight and in the clinch. His clinch knees to the body and face are second to none. Think about Anderson Silva hitting Rich Franklin with those knees to the face. Well, Corey Sandhagen has been doing a similar type of thing on the regional circuit. And with how short Lineker is, he could definitely test that iron chin of Lineker with some of them devastating knees up close. But there's just this feeling about him that he could be a real big name in the future. His toughness, grit, swagger, overall dynamic game paired with the violence that John Lineker brings to the table is going to make this fight really, really freaking exciting to watch. And I absolutely cannot wait for it. One of the reasons might be because we've already been forced to wait to see this fight for quite some time. Thanks, as always, for making it to this point in the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Tell me in the comment section down below who you think is going to win the main event between Jack Ray Souza and Jack the Joker Hermanson. And I'll see you next week for another one of these videos. Namaste. Thank you.